Hello students, welcome to my Abhyas. My name is Sahana Kes and I am your physics educator. So today uh, we will be learning a very beautiful session and this consists of very important topics and in that we will be going across main concept that is electric flux, Gauss law and also the applications of Gauss law. So coming to this chapter, uh, as we went on uh, having some of the important topics, in that we came across one such thing where there was uh, where we found out this electric intensity, right? So what was electric intensity? Electric field intensity or electric intensity was nothing but it was the strength of the electric field, right? So similarly, how is the strength of the electric field measured? Like what is the factor which is uh, giving the result of this electric field strength or electric strength clear so that we will be looking it into uh, today's session so coming to the electric flux so what is electric flux the first point so whenever we come across a magnet what we do is whenever we uh, just consider this as a magnet and you have north and south poles so we say the magnetic lines of force are moving from uh, north to south so what are these magnetic lines of force these are nothing but these are the imaginary lines okay so uh, imaginary lines in the sense what whenever i take a magnet whenever i just uh, put or split the iron fillings on the magnet that takes a shape okay that takes a shape from north to south pole so it will be in a uh, uh, in a way where you can just predict these are the lines of force and that constitutes what the magnetic field Similarly, in electric field, we have electric lines of force and this combination of electric lines of force, we call it as what? Electric flux. So, what is electric flux? For example, I will take a metal sheet. Okay. So, I will take a metal sheet and in that what I will do is, I will just take only a part of it, only a part of the surface. So, as I take a part of the surface, some electric lines of force will be moving across that unit area. So that uh, the electric lines of force moving in that per unit area, I call it as what? The electric flux. Clear. So I am not taking the whole metal sheet, but instead what I am doing, I am just taking a part of the metal sheet which is under the influence of electric field and I will measure how much strength or how much electric lines of force are moving across that uh, unit area and that is given by what nothing but the concept of electric flux okay so how is this electric flux and uh, why is it helpful for us so this is uh, mostly helpful because we will be deriving one equation in the further class which is called as Gauss law and we will be deriving the applications on that so as we are deriving the applications on that in that we come across this flux like to know the strength of that electric field See, for example, if I take an iron, uh, iron sheet and another side if I take a copper sheet. So, I will be, um, I'll be electrifying both of it. I cannot say which has more strength till I measure the electric field intensity or electric intensity, right? So, similarly, that electric intensity is nothing but it is the resultant of this electric flux. Clear? So, coming to the first, we will just see the definition of electric flux. So, when electric field is represented in the form of electric field lines, the number of field lines crossing per unit area placed normal to the electric field at a point is the measure of the strength of the electric field at that point. Okay. So, at that point in the sense, what point, the whatever consideration you have taken in that area, whatever the points are there uh, in that area, how many lines of force are moving, that is given by nothing but the electric flux. Clear. So, now moving on to the first uh, main important thing. Like, how should we take this? Uh, whenever I take a sheet, what happens? Either the electric lines of force will be parallel to it or it will be perpendicular to it. Right. So, how should I consider the equation of this? Because while deriving or in a mathematical form, we have to write it. Right. Because we have to get to know the result of that. So, whenever the field lines are perpendicular, okay, this is a metal sheet which I have taken, imaginary metal sheet and these are the electric lines of force. So, here what is happening? The electric lines of force are exactly perpendicular to the electric field or 
the surface which has electric field clear so what is the angle here the angle is nothing but you can just take another one here the angle is nothing but it is 90 degree okay so electric flux is actually given by an equation that is uh, it is denoted by phi okay and it is given by e a cos theta so why is it given by e into a first thing and why is it taken as e into a cos theta because whenever i take a electric flux what did i say it is the combination of electric lines of force or electric intensity and also the surface so here when i take e that is the electric field intensity which is a vector and when i take a area factor or which is a or ds you can take so that is nothing but it is a vector so both these are the vector quantities so what i'll be applying i'll be applying the dot product okay dot product of uh, vectors so whenever i uh, give the dot product what happens i get e a cos theta right so i'll be getting e into a cos theta so when i consider this when the electric lines of force are exactly perpendicular to the area then what happens the theta becomes what obviously 90 degrees so when i put 90 degrees in that like in the place of theta what happens the flux will be zero because e into a into cos 90 cos 90 is nothing but zero right so it is phi is equal to zero that is electric flux in that uh, sheet or the whatever in that electric lines of force are moving will be zero clear there is no flux in that you can say so moving on to the next when the electric lines of force are parallel so what happens so whenever the electric lines of force are parallel to the electric field the time you have this uh, equation again e a cos theta so when theta is zero what happens e into a cos zero right so when it is e into a cos zero cos zero is what one so it is e into a so whenever the electric lines of force are exactly parallel to the surface then we have maximum electric flux so we have maximum electric flux and whenever the electric lines of force are perpendicular to the surface or are perpendicular to the area which has electric field then we take it as minimum electric flux or zero electric flux so i hope this you have understood clearly because on this factors only we will be deriving some equations in the further classes so moving on to the next concept we have gauss theorem so before that we'll just uh, have a outlook like what we had studied in the pre uh, previous uh, session there we had come across a topic which was called as continuous charge distribution so in that continuous charge distribution we had three types of distributions and one was linear charge density second was the surface charge density and the third one was the volume charge density so coming to the linear charge what did we have so when we came across linear charge we had lambda is equal to what it is q divided by the length or the area whatever the length was there right and then coming to the surface charge density we have sigma is equal to q divided by a okay if you take it in the smaller quantities then you you have to put it as d dq divided by dl dq divided by da okay and when you considered volume it was taken as rho and that was given as what q divided by rho is nothing but volume so it was q by v i hope you have understood this concept clearly because this is necessary so as we have to prepare food delicious food when we have to prepare delicious food what happens you have to have all the ingredients so if you have the all ingredients ready then only you can prepare the delicious food right similarly here also we for a proof of a theorem or to know the application of that theorem we have to go across all the ingredients and then we have to apply it accordingly clear so after having a glance at the charge distribution now we'll move to the most important concept of this chapter and this uh, theme or this topic carries you around five marks compulsory in your academic exam that is we call it as a gauss theorem so what is gauss theorem first thing whenever i consider a random surface okay so i'll take a charge q1 here i take a charge q2 here and i take a charge q3 here 
okay so this is a closed surface another charge i'll take which is q4 at the outside the surface so i am not bothered about outside the surface because gauss theorem is only limited to the closed surfaces okay so as it is for the closed surfaces what happens first thing whenever i consider q1 and q2 and q3 uh, from the first uh, session of this topic we had discussed that we can add the charges that is additivity of the charges has uh, will be done okay can be done additivity of charges can be done so that is q1 plus q2 plus q3 i can do right so when i take it in the closed surface what i have to apply so whenever i take it in the closed surface whatever the flux will be having here whatever the electric flux we will have in this area will be equal to that is the flux phi will be equal to the electric flux phi will be equal to the total number of charges or the algebraic sum of charges to epsilon naught or 1 by epsilon naught of the total number of the charges so that you can say it as q1 plus q2 plus q3 divided by epsilon naught in simple terms or the additivity you can just take it as phi is equal to q resultant divided by epsilon naught which is nothing but the gauss theorem okay so what is gauss theorem gauss theorem is nothing but it is uh, whenever you consider a closed surface the flux linked with that uh, surface will be equal to 1 divided by epsilon naught and also to the that is it will be equal to the ratio of the algebraic sum of the charges to 1 divided or uh, to the epsilon naught epsilon naught is nothing but it is the permittivity of free space so we'll see the statement accordingly like what is exact statement so it states that the total electric flux passing through a closed surface so total electric flux passing through the closed surface is equal to 1 divided by epsilon naught times the net charge enclosed by the closed surface clear so what is it i have to find out the electric flux or the total electric flux and that will be equal to what the closed that will be equal to sorry 1 divided by epsilon naught times so phi will be equal to 1 divided by epsilon naught times the net charge the net charge in the sense the total charge enclosed by the closed surface that is q okay so finally what i'll get phi is equal to q divided by epsilon not and this you have to remember this will be in the case of only the closed surfaces enclosed or closed surfaces okay you have to be very specific about it clear and next moving on to the next we have another point where if a closed surface encloses a net charge q then elect uh, then according to gauss law the total electric flux phi passing through the closed surface is phi is equal to q divided by epsilon naught so this is the mathematical form of the gauss's theorem so if you have any doubts regarding this theorem please let me know so that i can clear your doubts as soon as possible so now i will uh, we'll just prove this theorem because whenever you have a theorem then you have a proof to for that also so we have uh, the equation of electric flux as what phi is equal to e into a cos theta right so now what i have to do here is here i have e into a cos theta so i'll just take the maximum electric field so when i take maximum electric field what happens phi is equal to e into a okay so whenever i take enclosed sphere or enclosed uh, thing that is whenever i take a sphere here i'll just take one surface okay and here what is happening the electric field line is coming out and this is nothing but the radius so this is point o and this is point p so i'll draw it correctly this is the sphere or a gaussian sphere i'll take gaussian sphere means which obeys the gauss's law okay so here i'll take a center and from here there is a surface one surface of consideration so that is uh, i'll just take it as uh, a okay or you can take it as ds also so it's better i'll take ds for you so it is ds 